Let's do an interesting challenge today. I'm going to rush through 10 React JS problems, which are interview level, which are great, which you all should know as a front end developer. And I'm going to explain them one by one. If you're somebody who's watching this on mobile, well, you can sit back and relax and you can figure out what solution I'm writing. But if you're somebody who's on a desktop, I would actually urge you to just beat my speed, right? And if you're stuck anywhere, of course, you have this video to check out the solutions as well. Let's start. So let's take a look at this page, codedam.com problem list React JS, which you can get from here, which you can get from Google, which you can find the link in the description. So many ways to get on this page. But the important thing is that we have to start solving each one of these labs one by one. So I'm going to start with progress bar. Let me just open this in a new tab so that it's cleaner to come back. And let's just wait for the environment to set up on code dam. Okay, so I'll just go through the problem statement once. Okay, so let me walk you through what I did. First blunder I did was actually writing style as a string, which is like old habits die hard of working with HTML. So I just forgot HTML and class name in Tailwind. Just forgot that style actually it needs to be an object. The rest of the things are pretty straightforward. Just have to give it a margin, which is not really required so that I can see if the border is curved or not. And then the final part, which was a little interesting was render the field part of bar. The correct width when percentage is greater than 100. So if you go to instructions, you're going to see that it doesn't actually tell you what you need to do but it's actually pretty evident that if a percentage is of course greater than 100 you just don't overflow the bar right you just make sure that it's capped at 100 so you just do a max.min of percentage and 100 this could also have a reverse effect of math.max of whatever that this value is and with zero right because negative width is a well it's an invalid css value but still it won't do as much damage as you know just an overflowing percentage bar okay on to the next selecting all checkboxes let me just go through the statement real quick okay awesome so we have to just have the ability of selecting these checkboxes and select all should work we already have the states so let's just get to it so i'm going to show you a little trick in this there is a very interesting library which i think all of you should know about it's called emmer so if I add Immer, what you could actually do is actually start mutating the state directly inside it. So you don't have to do that destructuring and all that thing. What you can directly do is say something like this. So if I import from Immer and if I have state like this, that's all I have to do. Because otherwise, what I would have to do is reconstruct this object and, you know, just gets a little messy. So Immer just keeps it clean, works, you know, across your state and set state works with Zustan and everything super cool so now if i click on this you can see it works but the select all still does not work so let's just make that happen as well all right awesome so it works now according to the functionality given to us and let's just try to see if it passes all our tests awesome on to the next challenge say is that we have to create a simple button which has some styles and this is how it operates right so let's just get to it you can use styled components as a library i'm just going to try to do it natively within css itself so let's see how that works so if i have click me there we go let's just start styling this button or in fact a better way is to just give it a class you know Okay, looks like we have our effect with us right now. Let's just try and see if it passes the challenges. Okay, so it looks like this lab does require us to, you know, just use style component as a mandatory thing, which is not probably clear in instructions. So let's just go ahead and change whatever we were doing into a style component instead of, you know, a regular file. So I can just take this off. And yep, this requires, this lab requires us to have a mandatory style components. So that is what you have to use. Okay, let's try hover counter as the next lab. This seems a little interesting and fun where you just have to hover over the button. Yep, that's all. You need an in-memory state and that's all you have to do. Just increment this as you're hovering on this button. I'm not sure if there is a on mouse over. I think this will just keep on firing if i'm not wrong so we should probably have an event like on mouse enter okay i did the wrong thing it should not have been c plus one it had to be c plus plus it did not have to be c plus 
plus it had to be c plus plus okay now this is working let's see if this passes awesome next up is this problem let's just try to see what we have to do over here so we have to fix bugs in this and of course right one of us can always write a program like this let's just try to see what's happening so i feel like this is a component which we need to render so let me just cut this first let's just create a component again from scratch this should be something like this where this gets returned awesome again let's just keep moving Next up is the tab bar problem. Let's try to see what this is about. Okay, so we have both of these tabs, but only one of them needs to be active at a given time, right? So that can be easily done with states, right? So we can have a active tab state. If I click on it, you can see now it becomes active or inactive. We also need to follow a few instructions, I think. So let's just also pass an active tab, active prop to this so that we get a nice CSS effect as well. So I can say active is active tab address. And similarly, this is active when active tab is person, right? So now we get a nice effect and our app also works. Let's try to see if this is enough or we need to do something more and there we go on to the next let's try out this problem now local storage lift state up okay so now we have a simple counter app that displays a component two buttons to increment and decrement the count we need to modify the component to store count in browser's local storage and the count is persisted even when the page is refreshed so a local storage based counter so let's just try this lab in which we have to create a local storage based counter which persists even if we are refreshing the page so right now we already have a counter which exists and which seems functional as well which will display your count but we need to make it in such a way that it actually does not lose its state when a page is refreshed so we have to shift this to local storage instead okay let's try to do that first things first we have to get the value from local storage right Now, when we are incrementing, it works, but if I refresh it at six, we also get six back, right? Why? Because if you go to sources, not sources, in resources, you can see local storage counter is in fact six. So if I remove this value and try to refresh it again, you see we are back to zero because that's what the default value is if it does not exist. So let's try to see and check if it passes all our test cases. Okay, so something is failing. Let's just read the instructions again okay so we have to use count not counter as the key that's why so let's just try this one more time and try to run the test and see if we pass this time very important to read instructions carefully because you know it's how you have to work as well in real world so let's just like this problem and keep moving okay this one looks pretty straightforward it's also an easy problem so let's just get along with it you just have a button and you just have to lock click to console so let's say if i have an on click and if i just do a console.log click click me i think that should be enough right so if i click on this you can see that we are seeing the console so it should be good awesome let's try a validate sign of form problem this seems like a medium problem so let's see what we need to do over here okay so we have to validate every single field over here and populate it with the error for that particular field okay first things first i think style component is missing from this so let's just install style components first Okay, let's just try to solve this problem now where we have to do a bunch of validation. And if you look at instructions, we have to only display this message if everything is successful, right? Let me just close the browser dev tools for now. And let's see. So on clicking sign up button, that is where we have to form this validation. So let's do that. This form validated. 
then and only then we display this button over here otherwise we don't do that right so now let's just try to create this function over here and let me just go ahead and actually you know make this save whenever i press save right because just constant refreshing is a little annoying so let me just go ahead and start making changes now and let's see so now first things first we have to get these values in the state as well and then errors associated with these values as well so let's just create let's say state and set state you know thinking about all the time we had use state and set state and class-based components and let's just try to create everything for you know these individual input fields okay now i'm gonna add another helper library which i like which i already told you about and that is Immer. Immer makes it extremely easy for performing you know these nested level updates in state without actually going crazy in syntax before we do that let's just go ahead and try to populate these first so i'm gonna say this is state.postName.value Okay, so now that our states are synced up, we also have to sync up these change events, right? Okay, so now if we take a look at our app, I believe that it should work. You know, it's just taking in all the input and everything. And it should be, all of that should be stored right here in the state which we have correct now that we have our state synced up let's start performing validation right so now we can say that if let you know is valid is true so we can say if state dot first name dot value is in fact not present we can just say is valid is false and we can say these error messages right so we can say set state produce state state dot first name dot error is equal to this let's just keep on doing this so for last name again we can just say last name cannot be empty so email is also invalid if it doesn't pass this regular expression password must be greater than these seven characters right finally if state.password.value is not equal to state.cpassword.value then there is something wrong right then we can just say passwords do not match this looks solid to me now we also have to inject these error messages somehow right so let's just inject them right here state dot first name dot error let's just say we start it like that now this works kind of we are not getting the last name error so that is because last name this should be last name not first name and there we go so now if i click on this you can see that it works right so let's just try to see if it passes our tests or not oh yeah there's one thing which we are forgetting is that this is valid needs to be returned right because otherwise this log will never get printed even if the form is valid so now this should hopefully work as you can see our last case fails because we did not return this so let's just try to rerun this one more time and see if this passes now okay so it still does not pass so let's just try to do a manual check okay so i guess that it's not actually resetting the error messages right even if it's valid so if we do something like if is valid then we should just pretty much remove all sorts of error messages right this is last name, this is C password, this is email. Okay, now let's just try with an invalid value first and then with some valid 
values next. Okay, looks like something is wrong. So let's just debug it the traditional way. And let's just try to see what's going on over here. Okay, looks like we have some issues in this test and I think in the regular expression. And yep, it sure does. And we have passed our test. So it was an interesting challenge and this was one of those things which you would do a lot of times with React in real world. Form validation, you know, getting user input, making sense of a lot of things. Definitely an interesting problem, but yeah, that's something you should be practicing, especially if you're going for an interview or something. Okay, now this one is an easy problem where we have to fix syntax errors in a class-based component. Well, I have been a little rusty on class-based components, so let's see how well I am able to do this. But let's just see. So we have a state with a count and we are incrementing count like this. So if I increment this, nothing really happens so if i do count plus one over here how about that okay i think that's all we have to do right <laughs> i was able to spot this because this is the same mistake i did in the previous one of these previous questions okay awesome back to our last problem in react js category let's see we have the use theme problem so we have to write a custom hook in this one which uses use theme and holds the current value of theme which can be the light or dark okay so we have to return a function which gives us either a theme and a toggle theme function so first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna give it a object value because we should always try to memoize the return values from especially our own custom hooks because this is like a super important thing to do if you want to work peacefully with the act 18 right so let's just do something like this and let's just make theme a state variable our theme is this and our toggle theme is set theme and finally let's just also make this as a dependency let's just return object from it okay there we go okay we have use state not defined let's just import that real quick and now when i click on toggle theme it works just as we would like it to work so initial theme is light we are able to toggle it between dark and light and it just works fine right because we have written super solid code one thing which is actually missing from code dumb ide which you can see is that it did not point me when you know use state was missing the eslint the linter thing is missing which we really want to add you can see the lsp is there auto imports and everything work in vs code on code dam but the linter is actually the heavy lifting right which is missing we'll add that soon but until then be careful and write good code so Let's just like this problem and move on. So now you can see that I have indeed completed all the problems available currently in the React.js problem list. I'm going to work and I'm going to make sure that we have more such problems on this portal. 11 becomes 100, 100 becomes 1000 so that you can go ahead and instead of practicing DSA questions on hacker rank, code share, fleet code, all these places you actually work on real world things which is this this is what you do on a daily basis this is what you will be asked if you are working in a startup you know if you are working on some problems and this is where you have to be sharp you know very small bugs you can make but this is where you have to get sharper so yeah that is all for this video hopefully you enjoyed this run of 10 11 problems whatever it was uh, and uh yeah, I hope to see you in the next video really soon. Make sure you leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this problem set. Go ahead and try out some other list, Node.js, maybe JavaScript. We are working on improving these problems, making them better, making them harder and more in quantity every single day for you. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.